Good afternoon YouTube. So what's this video on attic ventilation doing in my solar heating playlist? Solar heating is taking air heated by the sun and moving it to some place not as hot. In this case I'm taking the solar heated air here in my attic and moving it outside. Then that pulls cool air from outside into the attic reducing the temperature. In this case, the solar heating part is free. Sunlight hits the roof of the house and heats the air below. But I didn't want the moving the hot air part to be an ongoing expense. So that's where solar power comes in, using the sun to produce electrical energy to power the fans to move the air out of the attic. As luck would have it, I found my utility company was offering a $100 rebate for solar attic fan installations. I could buy a solar attic ventilator for $200 to $400 at the home improvement store. The problem is the ones I looked at needed a huge opening cut into the roof, like 14 inch diameter. My house has a metal tile roof, so cutting a big hole would require hiring an experienced roofer to install the fan and seal up the hole. I estimated that would be fairly expensive and decided to look for alternatives. My house originally had a pair of in-wall gas furnaces that vented outside via oval ducts through the roof. The furnaces were removed and replaced with a central forced air furnace long before I purchased the house. The old furnace vents left a pair of oval 3 by 9 inch holes in the roof. That size looked about right for a PC fan. I made this adapter out of 1 by 8 scrap lumber to mount two 120 millimeter PC fans side by side. The original house builders just cut out a section of roof decking for the furnace vents. I cut the piece of wood to fit back into that opening. I traced the duct outline, duct outline and then made a bevel cut with a jigsaw angle outward at 45 degrees. Then I found these decent quality Silenex fans that were quiet rated to run horizontally and moved a fair amount of air. Now all I needed was something to control and power them. I thought about using my old Harbor Freight solar fan controller to do this. Since it seemed to be sensitive to heat and had to be adjusted frequently, I didn't want to put that up in the 140 degree Fahrenheit attic. And it had that stupid PWM fan output that made the small fans run way too slow. I decided to split up the system, placing a passive thermostat and fans in the attic, solar panels on the roof, and a charge controller and batteries someplace more hospitable. So I picked up this 40 amp MPPT charge controller. You can see that in my solar system overview video. Now I know 40 amps is way overkill for the 1 amp fan load I needed to run. I thought I could find other uses for it and this unit seemed to be a good value at about $200. I had my old Harbor Freight jump start pack to use as a battery bank. The final piece of the puzzle was this Ventramatic attic fan thermostat. The online information says it's for AC operation, but after buying one and tearing it apart, it's just a bimetal switch. It is UL listed and has a small fire stat to shut off the fans in case of a fire. To make it last a long time on DC I added this RC snubber circuit across the output contacts to prevent arcing with the DC fan motors. I then ran a pair of wires into the attic from the charge controller and into the thermostat or through a fuse to the thermostat and then out to the fans. I set the thermostat around 75 or 80 degrees and it's been running for about 15 months with no issues. I sent my paperwork into the utility company. They sent out an inspector and he approved the system as it met their requirements. <clears throat> I received the $100 rebate on my electric bill and that paid for the cost of the fans and the thermostat. I have six to eight fans total using about one amp of DC power moving an advertised 75 cubic feet per minute each, although I suspect the airflow is lower than that. In really hot weather, the fans may run 24 hours a day, but usually shut off later at night. I bought this new 
duostat controller to replace the simple thermostat that I have in there now. This unit has both a temperature and a humidity setting, so it will activate the attic fans in the winter if the humidity level gets too high. Since I'm now using the attic for storage, keeping the humidity in check is a good idea. Also, when I was insulating my attic last year, I noticed a few areas where there was some mold. I treated those areas and opened them up for better airflow. Here is a second pair of fans in the other furnace vent hole. I have two more pair of fans in the gable vents at the ends of the roof. So the question you will probably have is how well do the fans work? At first I noticed a small 5 to 10 degree Fahrenheit temperature drop in the peak attic temperature over the day. Then I added some radiant foil barrier between the roof joists and saw a bigger drop in temperature. The combination of the radiant barrier cutting the heat input and the fans slowing the rate of increase made the big difference. I used to see 130 to 140 Fahrenheit in the attic and now I see 100 to 110 on the hottest days so that's a big improvement. Today it was sunny all day with a high of 90 outside and the attic peaked at 94. Inside the house I used to see temperatures in the mid 80s on hot days and this last summer it never got over 80. I don't have air conditioning in the house so the attic fans and radiant foil really help to keep the house cooler in the summer. Now I can't say I'm saving any energy since I had no AC powered attic ventilation before but online sources say you can easily use 2 kilowatt hours per day with an AC powered system running 8 hours a day. I hope you enjoyed this video about the first DC load I put on my solar power system. If you have any questions, use the comment section below. Be sure to rate and share this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. Thanks for watching.